ultra runners from around the world gather in the lowest point in the United States to run 135 miles in record heat in the 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135. Well, hello, Ultra Racing fans, and welcome to Ultra Racing Network's coverage of the 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135. I'm Jarek Wilhelmsen. Well, folks, we are back to the original route. This year, the Badwater starts in Badwater, which is the lowest point in the continental United States, and goes 135 miles, mostly uphill, to Mount Whitney Portal, Mount Whitney being the highest point in the lower 48 states. 100 runners representing 23 different nationalities were invited to compete in the world's toughest foot race. So let's cut to the video and check it out. Death Valley is known for being the lowest point in the continental United States. With temperatures averaging way over 100 degrees, it's no place for rookies. But today, 68 men and 29 women will attempt to run more than an ultra distance, 135 miles, in the scorching heat in the 38th year of the Nutramatics Badwater 135. Last year, due to restrictions on athletic activities in Death Valley National Park, the route was altered. But by making a few adjustments, like starting at night, Adventure Corps' Chris Kosman was able to get the Nutramatics Badwater 135 back to its original route. Yeah, so we're really excited to be back here in Death Valley National Park. And, uh, you know, we've got a great working relationship with the Park Service, and we've been able to create a... Uh, you know, an understanding of one another and what our goals and aspirations are. And really, they're very much the same thing. We want everybody to be safe and get to the finish line safely. So, you know, in order to accomplish that, the Park Service wants uh, the runners not on the highway in the middle of Death Valley in daylight. So we'll start in the evening. Well, the race did that in 1989 through 1995, so it's not even something new. They also want the crew members to be much more visible when they're supporting the runners. So they have to wear shirts like this that are a bright color with reflective stripes on them. And then we had to put up more signs along the route warning motorists and, uh, and then just educating the runners and the crews before the race, here at the pre-race meeting, in the magazine, on the website, just so they understand how important it is that we really do the right thing so we can be back here next year and the year after. The race begins in Badwater, the lowest point in Death Valley, at 282 feet below sea level. From there, the route moves north along California 190 to the first time station at Furnace Creek and the 17-mile mark. At that point, the runners finally reach sea level. From there, runners continue west and fairly level around the tip of Tucky Mountain until they reach time station 2 at Stovepipe Wells and the 42-mile mark in the race. And then that's when the climbing begins. Runners will gain 5,000 feet over the next 20 miles as they summit Town Pass. They then immediately drop 3,500 feet to Panamint Springs and Time Station 3 at the 72-mile mark. Back to climbing as racers continue west to Time Station 4, Darwin, 90 miles into the race and 5,200 feet of elevation. Runners then get a little break on the way to the town of Lone Pine, but from there it's straight up Mount Whitney, and the final push is 15 miles and 5,000 feet of gain up to Whitney Portal, where victorious ultra runners will cross the finish line. And speaking of ultra runners, we have a competitive field this year. The returning male champion, Harvey Lewis from Ohio, is returning to defend his title. Valmir Nunes of Brazil currently holds the men's course record with a time of 22 hours, 51 minutes, and 29 seconds. But that was set eight years ago in 2007, so we'll have to see what kind of pace he holds this year. Another champion, Oswaldo Lopez from 2011, is here to compete as well, and Grant Mon has finished twice in second place. We'll see if he goes for a third. In the women's category, returning champion Allison Venti of New York seemed focused as she went through registration and is looking forward to starting at night and taking on the original route. And Pam Reed of Wyoming has several wins and podium finishes under her belt, including overall winner in 2002 and 2003. So folks, as you can see, it's going to be a competitive field this year. And although we're doing the traditional route, we're throwing in a twist by starting in in the evening. So we'll see how that unfolds. Tuesday, July 28th, as the sun begins to sink and the heat dips under 100 degrees, ultra runners and their teams begin to gather. Badwater, at 282 feet below sea level, it's the lowest point in the continental United States. 
The first of three waves of ultra runners and their crews have assembled here and begin to make preparations for the world's toughest foot race. The 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135 is about to begin and racers are eager to get things started. So uh, it's going to be so tempting to go fast early because it'll be cooler, you know. Uh, we got the night time, so it's going to be very require a lot of discipline to, to, to contain your excitement and your, uh, your fitness. Running 135 miles while climbing over 14,000 feet takes an organized crew with a plan. We have everything that Russ, Russ needs right here. It's his clothes for night, clothes for cold, hot, bandanas, chopboard, because we're going to be chopping some fruit for him. Over here we have his salt. He needs a lot of salt as he's running in the heat. All kinds of sunscreens and bug repellents over here. We have everything for his feet here. All the runners need to head down to the Badwater sign, please. The first of three waves will leave from Badwater at 8 p.m. with waves at 9.30 and 11 p.m. after that. In accordance with the National Park Service request, everyone involved with Badwater is in highly reflective gear. Staff and crew members can be spotted in their Zizix brand yellow and orange reflective shirts. As the countdown continues, runners pose for their group photo and pause for the national anthem. And with a cheer, the first wave is off and the 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135 begins. Runners settle into their pace groups as they run the first few miles. In the first 17 miles of the race, runners will remain below sea level as they run along the base of Mount Perry and along Badwater Road to the town of Furnace Creek and Time Station 1. As the first wave stretches out, runners and crews from the 9.30 start pass on their way to the starting line. And once again, the parking lot at Badwater fills with excited race teams. One runner this year, Jason Romero of Denver, Colorado, is legally blind. He explained to race director Chris Kosman how he plans on using his guide stick. If the cars are coming too close, then probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this thing like as a cider because it's really well reflected. I see. And a lot of cars will be able to see me. I see. As the runners wait for their start, they gather with their crew for last minute preparations and plans. I've been out here training on the course for the last two months and I feel ready, I feel heat trained. I've pretty much you know, taken it piece by piece and I've done the whole course. So I think it's a confidence thing just to know the course and know what, where the tough points are going to be, where I just have to walk. It's just that's what everybody does and then where I need to run. Before long, the 930 wave lined up for their group shot and with another exciting countdown, they took off. The 11 p.m. wave is composed of the elite of the elite. As Oswaldo Lopez, the 2011 champion, arrived, he was all business. This year, there will be a competitive field in both the women's and men's categories. Returning champions Harvey Lewis and Allison Venti, legends like Pam Reed, are also here, as well as course record holder Valmir Nunez, and many other big and not so big names here and ready to compete. 11 p.m. came and the final wave of the race was on their way. For all the time splits, go to the Badwater website where you can see the results for the 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135 and all of Adventure Corps races. Make sure to like Ultra Racing Network on Facebook to get the latest news from Badwater and the ultra racing world. The 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135 was now underway with all three waves having left the starting line. Harvey started out strong with Grant close behind. There is a tight competition in the women's field with Allison Venti leading the way. At the 17 mile mark in the race sits Time Station 1 in Furnace Creek. The race officials were working hard logging times and manning the webcast while crews from the first two waves awaited their racers. As racers came in, they will check in and then either spend time off their feet at the time station or just rehydrate and get on their way. 
and they continue into the night, where they will eventually reach sea level, somewhere between here and the next time station at Stovepipe Wells. The next section of the race between Time Station 1 and 2 is 25 miles long as it heads west along California 190 and rounds the northern edge of Tucky Mountain. Although it's relatively flat, runners will have to deal with small rollers as they bob above and below sea level. As morning breaks, runners approach stovepipe wells. From this point on, they will remain above sea level. Crews have lined up along the parking lot of the general store as they wait for their runners. They use this opportunity to resupply and reconfigure after a long night of supporting their racers. Tony Clark from Augusta, Kansas, was feeling good after his night of running. Good. This is the best I've ever felt at this point in the race, for sure. Tony is running for the descendants of Sparta in order to bring awareness to veteran suicide. He checked in with the time officials and went back to his crew. Tony's crew hooked him up with a cold coffee, and he was off again with a smile on his face to take on the day. The third wave of runners was thoroughly mixed in with the race field as Allison Venti came through. She arrived at time station two with the lowest time of six hours and 41 minutes, followed by number nine, Nikki Wind of Listerfield, Australia at six hours and 59 minutes, and Amy Costa, third into time station two for the women in just over seven hours. Several other runners came through the time station before it was time to start their climb. At about 1,000 feet of elevation, number nine, off. Lori Alexander, took some time off her feet with her crew as she cooled off with a bucket of ice water. Lori and other racers will climb over 4,000 feet over Town Pass and on their way to the next time station in Panamint Springs. Making their way to the summit, the elite runners have moved to the front of the pack and are now jockeying for position. Last year's champ, Harvey Lewis, was struggling to maintain his place with the leaders but kept moving on with a determined spirit. The 2011 champion, Oswaldo Lopez, maintained a strong pace as he moved steadily up the hill. Course record holder Valmir Nunez was setting a fast pace. Holding his own amongst these Badwater legends was 27-year-old Pete Kostelnik from Lincoln, Nebraska. The summit of Town Pass is at 4,965 feet, and Valmir Nunez was the first of the front runners to reach it. Oswaldo Lopez, in traditional fashion, was in good spirits as he crossed the pass. And Ali Venti, still holding her lead amongst the women, continued over the summit. From this point on, it's a 2,000-foot drop into the Panamint Valley, as runners make their way across a dry lake bed in the hottest part of the day. As ultra runners continued their journey on the 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135, it was the hottest part of the day, with temperatures averaging around 115 degrees. Thanks, Chris. In the middle of the pack, the racers have spread out and found their pace as they climb and fight the heat. Yikes. After one of the toughest climbs of the race over Town Pass, racers descend 2,000 feet into the Panamint Valley to cross a dry lake bed on the way to Time Station 3 in Panamint Springs. As racers descend into the valley, crews continue to push hydration and use their pacers to monitor and support their racers. Whereas some racers, like Pam Reed, gave a little back to the crews. Say is nobody's allowed to have fun on my crew. They're, they're seemingly having fun. I am not. We're having fun. There you go. Susie, she says we're not allowed to have fun anymore. The calories down. I'm sorry. Yeah, These are good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Brittany, it's, uh, it's I'll get it. Do you want to keep going? What is uh, that? Okay. okay. Good. Ready? I'll get to sunscreen. Oh, Don't here we go. It's okay. Huh? As midday approached, the heat kept rising, and the runners continued across this extreme landscape. Crews leapfrogged their runners and were constantly working to keep their racers' body temperatures down. The time station at Panamint Springs is 72 miles into the race and sits on the patio of the only restaurant in town. 26-year-old Jared Federoff of Austin, Texas was the first to arrive at time station 3 in Panamint Springs, although he left in the 9.30 wave and has an hour and a half head start on the 11 p.m. wave. 
job. Thank you. 942, I got you down for it. Valmir Nunez's crew arrived at Time Station 3 and awaited their racer. Based on time, Valmir was holding the lead. Valmir made a quick transition and kept moving up course. Arriving at Panamint Springs with media and officials looking on, On his heels was Pete Kostelnik. Right. He came into the time station looking for a quick pit stop before moving on. At time station 3 in Panama Springs in the 72 mile mark, Valmir Nunez is holding the lead with a time of 10 hours 47 minutes. Pete Kostelnik, the 27 year old from Nebraska, has moved into second and is putting pressure on Valmir. And Oswaldo Lopez is rounding out the top three who have broken away from the pack and remain within sight of each other. Having an impressive day, Nikki Wind of Australia was closing in on Allison. As she entered the time station, her and her pacer had a little ice cream and a little fun before they were on their way. You just enjoy yourself, mate. The Aussies will do the hard work out there on the hills. <laughs> Immediately after time station three, racers climb a stretch where they have little crew access before exiting Death Valley National Park on the way to Darwin, or Time Station 4. Racers battle for the lead as they climb Mount Whitney in this episode of the Ultra Race Report. The competition at the front of the 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135 is starting to heat up. Currently holding third in the men's division, 2011 men's champion Oswaldo Lopez's crew prepares as he approaches their position. As he gets closer, he shouts to get the cream. He needs a massage. They spring into action like a well-tuned team and take care of business. It's all hands on deck to get the racer rubbed down, cooled down, and back on the course. Three minutes up, and Oswaldo was back on route. Slightly ahead and gaining on the lead is Pete Kostelnik. The 27-year-old from Lincoln, Nebraska, has pushed his way to the front of the pack and is now giving the front runners some serious competition. Time Station 4, known as Darwin, sits at the 90 mile mark in the race and is known for some windy conditions. Valmir Nunez, currently on record pace, was the first to come through this time station at 1.06 p.m. local time. Kostelnik's crew arrived on location and awaited their racer and were motivated about their racer's position. He's doing really well. We're proud of Rocking him. It. Working really hard. It wasn't long before Pete came in. As he arrived at the time station, he took a moment to sit down and hydrate. He didn't stay long and hit the road just 30 minutes behind Nunez. Oswaldo came into Darwin shortly after, checked the times, and hit the road. Runners were now in sight of Mount Whitney as they approach Time Station 5 in Lone Pine. They have less than a marathon's distance left in the race. Here, Kostelnik kicked it into overdrive and overcame Valmir, who was starting to fade. His determination was clear. This is all I want. Ever since I finished last year. And as the route reached the cutoff at Dolomite Road, Nunez wasn't looking good. At that point, Oswaldo's crew pulled in behind his vehicle. Being old friends, Nunez moved out to the road to wait for the approaching Oswaldo. Concerned for his friend, Oswaldo offered the services of his massage therapist and had to move on. Nunez took the help, but it was clear his race was over. 
past champion Allison Vinti of New York continued to push on and fight the heat. On her tail was Nikki Wind of Australia, who maintained good spirits. Her crew was easy to spot in their red minivan. They were working well as a team as they supported their racer. And although she was cool, calm, and collected, you could tell she was in race mode. I'm going, I'm going. Just up the road, Allison's crew awaited her as she approached the town of Keeler. With Mount Whitney in sight, she was experiencing highs and lows. Ups and downs. And for the first time, was being passed by Nikki's crew as they leapfrogged their racer. Pete Kostelnik, now holding the lead, was approaching Lone Pine. As Badwater fans gathered along the side of the road, you could hear his pacer calling out directions to Pete. Pete's crew set up in the parking lot of their hotel. As he arrived, it was clear Pete was having trouble with his contacts and unable to see for the past few miles. Having to dispose of his contacts because of the high stress of the race, putting in the one he has left goes bad. While this was going on, Oswaldo was approaching Lone Pine. Time Station 5, or Race Headquarters, is located at the Dow Villa Hotel in Lone Pine, California, and at the 122-mile mark in the race. Pete Kostelnik was the first through this time station as the crowd cheered him on. Good job, guys. Good job. Back in the women's division, Nikki Wind moved into first place, just outside of Lone Pine. Things didn't look so good for Alice and Venti. Although she continued to push forward, this year's attempt at Badwater came to an end. Now that Pete Kostelnik has passed Lone Pine, it's just a short 10 miles and a 5,000 foot climb to the finish line. Oswaldo Lopez would do his best to catch him. Before long, Pete Kostelnik crosses the finish line to become the 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135 champion with a time of 23 hours, 27 minutes, and 10 seconds. Oswaldo Lopez stayed strong and came in a close second with a time of 25 hours and 28 minutes. And coming in third in the male division was Mick Thwaites of Banyo, Australia. Hello. Yo, 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 yo. And the Australians take it in the women's division. Nikki Wind stayed strong to the end with her final push, bringing her over the finish line in 27 hours and 23 minutes. Coming in second for the women was Pam Reed with a time of 31 hours and 24 minutes. And rounding out the top three was Jill Anderson of Reno, Nevada, with a time of 34 hours and 4 minutes. For all the time splits, go to the Badwater website, where you can see the results for the 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135 and all of Adventure Course races. Make sure to like Ultra Racing Network on Facebook to get the latest news from Badwater and the ultra racing world. Thank you folks for joining us on Ultra Racing Network's coverage of the 2015 Nutramatics Badwater 135. Make sure to keep checking back with us for more coverage of ultra races.